That's less than two per year. At this rate, it will take more than 47 years to complete. And many of our survivors and intergenerational survivors will not be here to see the completion. Some non-Indigenous people don't view this as a problem. They think that because they did not participate in the historical trauma caused to Indigenous people, they don't need to participate in acts of reconciliation. They don't realize that they still benefit from the terrible things that have happened to Indigenous people throughout history and the long-lasting effects of those actions continue to have profoundly negative impacts on the lives of many Indigenous people today. Indigenous children today still face the effects of colonization and attempts to assimilate due to systemic discrimination and chronic underfunding of the child welfare system. Indigenous people are incarcerated at a much higher rate in Canada than the general population. Equal access to education continues to be a barrier for First Nations children. Indigenous people are more likely than other Canadians to experience persistent poverty. The continued consequences of colonialism and discrimination have been linked to high rates of suicide in Indigenous communities. These are just a few of the facts that are a reality today. Acknowledging how society has benefited from the devastation of Indigenous people is going to be uncomfortable. This conversation isn't new. The voices of our ancestors, elders, survivors, and our youth deserve to be heard. As an ally, you can show your support by listening, acknowledging, and trying to understand the truths of both the devastating history of Canada's treatment of Indigenous people and also recognizing the lingering impacts those actions have caused for generations. Now is the time to listen. To continue learning. To show support. To learn about allyship. You can't get to reconciliation until you can discuss the truth. Your presence is a step towards reconciliation.